Welcome back to Limbus Company, Daily Mirror Dungeon. It's a new week, it's a hard run. We're doing a charge team, we're gonna try and make Red Eyes Penitence work. Cause last week for my actual hard run, I did, uh... I did, you know, sinking of course, focusing more so on the Solemn Laments. So this week I'm focusing on the charge here, and more use out of uh, Red Eyes Ryoshi here, right? See how that goes, but yeah, we want charge stuff. Don't particularly want that one though, can we get Bracer maybe? No, okay, that's fine. We'll just take Raking of the Day then. Starting with full Wish of Stars, so you know, we're decked out, you know. Dripping as they say. Uh, sure, we'll take Booty Doll. I mean, no reason not to, I guess, right? And as far as turn order goes, as far as, you know, whatever order, whatchamacallit thing you go, we'll just do like this. Might bench uh, either Dawn or Otis at some point, right? Something like that. See how that goes. In case you're wondering, this is the loading screen because I quickly went into the um, I went into the Candle Three Dungeon earlier just to see what they, exactly they changed uh, regarding the uh, walking on cools thing. Cools thing. I actually took some screenshots of it, so I guess I can show now. Um, if you go and like walk on coals uh, in the Candle Three Dungeon. Uh, you can see that Dawn has like a negative 100 to modifier to make it so it's basically, it will not basically, it is impossible for her to win. Like there's just physically no way of her winning that. Which is pretty funny. You can still try it though, and you know, she just, Dawn Kyoto declares, I shan't walk bare of feet. Which you know is uh, pretty funny. Good change, I'd say. Oops. There we go. Okay. We're gaming though. But yeah, so the loading screen is going to be weird and might be weird for a while. Weird until I remember to change it, which knowing me might be, might mean like you're stuck. I'm going to be stuck with it till like, uh, till Devia Rodion, right? Shh. Would be very in character for me. Just completely forgot to change the loading screen thingy. It's really usually not that big of a deal, though. We can run a bit of a strange loading screen for a bit. Might as well. I remember, loading screens used to, like, change so infrequently before they made it so that ID artwork could show up in loading screens. And I know, for, like, for the first, like, while of Daily Mirror Dungeon, at least, I had it set to the one of Dawn just breaking the glass as the loading screen, because I thought it was a funny image. She looks very dopey there. And it's cool. But you know, there's not really too much reason to change it too much, because it's going to change every two weeks no matter what, because there's going to be a new ID, that sort of thing, right? That's fine. Let's see. But yeah, we'll see if we can get, like, the maximum, like, charge funnies we can get, right? That sort of thing. We're not going to Violet Noon Floor because the uh, charge gift there isn't that worth it in my opinion i'd rather just keep my charge personally uh and also there's like i mean maybe i will right since we're in hard it's not like a death sentence to go to that floor because like it's not gonna replace a shop or anything maybe i'll go there anyways i don't know well if nothing else something cool we can try here is we can actually do uh murder the warp express floor four since the event ended last week, uh, it's now Floor 4 often, so we can do that, and then we can take the Eogus from that and carry them over to Floor 5, right? Fight, like, Ahab or Dongrang or something like that. One of those funny fights. We've got a lot of stuff to upgrade here, so the first floor shop may not be great for us, because we really want to get all of these to plus plus. We got some good refreshers, though. Getting, you know, the free the free re free upgrade for charge type gloves at first is pretty nice. But yeah, so now we've got a lot of charge stuff going for us. And this is only the beginning, that's for sure. We can take it even further, and we will attempt to take it even further. And we can just immediately rip space. We can either do, like, basically everything first turn, right? Like, you've actually got 15 charge already, god. Kind of crazy, that's for sure. 
Shame Otis didn't quite get that much. Everyone gets like a baseline of like, not everyone, but like the people who select like in the first few three slots have a baseline of 12 now. It's weird, right? It's once we get Lightning Rod, we're gonna be able to consistently have everyone like at least 15 charge, like every fight, the start of every fight, right? Now, unfortunately, the charge gain stuff isn't the biggest deal for Ryoshu because, um, well, she effectively needs 30 charge to use her skill three, her alt skill three, right? There's not a big downside for not having it, but, uh, since whenever she gains charge, it goes to one or the other, it doesn't state which one. Like, her actual charge gain is good, but her actual, the benefits she gets from the charge EU gifts aren't as great as most charge IDs, just because of how much charge she needs, right? Still pretty good, though. There's, you know, Serious Skullbuster. And then turn after Serious Skullbuster, she has only Ashes remain. Uh, funny, dead daughter joke. I'm sure. But... Which just means she turns her charge into, like, healing HP and SP for the team, which is cool. Gamble, Milepost. Milepost on, you know, effectively second floor is pretty nice. And we can just go, like, Falling Flowers, take Wrist Guard, hopefully get more stuff. If nothing else, we can just, uh, buy a bunch of filler in this shop, rest stop next floor, fuse some charge tier threes, right? Something like that. Carmilla, I'll take it, yeah. Bleed stuff also isn't the worst idea for us, because, you know, Ryoshu has bleed stuff. Hey, you know the Skullbuster, sure. But bleed isn't my big priority here. That's why we've got, like, Mursa, though, right? To potentially get some bleed synergy. Flightoscope, not too great for us. Nebulas are not too great for us. Tomorrow's Fortune... Probably early enough to warrant that. We can sell Voodadol, yeah. Sell Voodadol, take Tomorrow's Fortune. Press on. I'll go top path. Eh, I probably should go on bottom path. That's fine. Pegatula would mean ego gift, more ego gifts means more chances to fuse a charge tier 3 we need next floor, so, yeah. Would have been the smart move, but that's fine. It's a very minor deal. Because here's the thing, next floor will definitely be able to fuse at least one charge tier 3, and of the three, all of them are... <clears throat> all of them are nice for us. Obviously, you know, uh... Charge barrier 1 is used for the fusion gift, so that would be nice. Lightning Rod is just more charge for everyone. It's just really solid to have. And, um, Imitative Generator just buffs skill 3 coin power. It's not the most insane thing for Ryoshi compared to some of the other charge IDs, because she doesn't have as many coins as your average charge skill 3, only having a 3 coiner. But, I mean, it's still a nice benefit, right? Definitely, like, Imitative Generator is probably the worst of 3 for us to get. So maybe I'll try and aim for a floor that has Imitative Generator as a floor clear reward, so I can make sure I fuse the ones I actually want. We'll see. Have a nice Lust Resonance. We get a Skull Buster going on. We also have a Serious Skull Buster going on. So we get to do a little bit of both. We get a Serious Skull Buster, this robot, who's weak to Blunt. One of these days, we'll get a Serious Skull Buster and actually use all three coins. But so far, enemies just kind of die too fast. Which is a good complaint to have, really. Let's see, Ramio gift, sure. Could gamble for the charge here gift. I'd just kind of rather have quantity over quality right now, I think, though. The more you gifts I have, the more fusion ingredients I have, right? Which is good for us. We're gonna get another skull verse next turn, yeah, okay. We'll just pop it then. Might as well. Because this first Skullbuster will get us a decent bit of the resources, potentially have enough to uh, actually... Yeah, we do have enough to Serious Skullbust next turn. So that's pretty good. Well, we now know if we just get like a... If we get two Skullbusters like in a row, which is very likely, especially when she's got two skill slots, uh, that's pretty nice. Maybe I should bench Heathcliff. That's probably, like, the best move. He's kind of, like... I like him. I like photoelectricity. Um, he's more or less... Like, not super important to the bit I'm going for, though, right? Like, we've got Multicrack Faust, right? Who does kind of what Heathcliff does. Similarly, Heathcliff's got a bit more of a supporty role, a bit more of a blunt role than... That, which can make him nice, you know, get that blunt fragility going for Ryoshu. 
So I don't know. I really want to bench someone, but I can't decide who. Because I'd like for... I mean, honestly, best choice is probably bench you, yeah. We'll just roll with that. I know I don't need to do it now, but I figured might as well just start rolling with it so I don't forget to do it whenever we get, like, Abnos and stuff. Because otherwise I'm going to forget to do it when we get to Abnos and stuff. You can immediately max spend that one. That's pretty nice. Immediate Skullbuster. You actually rolled four Penitents and eleven Red Eyes, so that's actually pretty bad luck, it looks like. Shh. Hmm. Bit funny. Wee bit funny. Nice. And yeah, we can just do that. That'll kill. Cool. Looks good. Serious skull monster. Oh, we gotta use third coin. Cool. Yeah, 34 roll. Pretty nice. If we had imitative generator, we could push that even further. If we had... Something from Murder on the Warp Express. I know at least one of them, like, or maybe most of them buff skill threes. I don't remember. The Warp Express EU gifts are pretty hard to remember. They all do unique things, but, like, they, it kind of lacks the, uh... Well, the fusion gifts are really weird, right? That's my main gripe with that one. Like, because, like, making the sword in the BL one, making the pocket watch in the time-killing time one, like, that was really self-explanatory, right? But like, you just kind of shove random stuff together in the uh, Warp Express dungeon. Or not dungeon, but the Warp Express floor. It didn't get a dungeon. Sloth guy is cool. Skullbuster. That's pretty cool. Skullbuster. We will view double up, yeah. Probably the best double up. We've got a lot of strong skill threes this turn, so have the those two be the ones that double up in that front. I guess Skullbuster, you know, without being super serious, isn't the strongest. Like it didn't even stagger. If all if you actually got all heads, it would have staggered, but she didn't, so it didn't stagger. Nice. And then Faust can capitalize off the photoelectricity a little bit, which is cool, but not the biggest deal since we're doing perfectly fine on charge, anyways. And yeah, Rip Dimension does a bit of damage. Does the funny load thing as well. Or it didn't? Yeah. Oh, it's because she technically had zero... Was it... Technically had zero potency, I guess? I guess so. Hmm. It's weird. Makes sense, but it's still very weird seeming. Does that kill? Uh, exactly kills. Cool. Actually, with the rupture, it's a little bit more than exact, and there's probably some other things here and there that made it not exactly exact, but the point still stands. Nice. Skull busted. Spiderhead skull faced. Cool. And I like multi crack Faust a lot, so she's a fun idea. Love the skill to, like, focus ID. Uh, we can get Pimbor Logic Tier 2, so it's good for fusions. Excellent. We get an event. Okay. We can go for the dun 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 you know. Uh, do we want the Ego Gift? Probably. Levels are really good, especially... Ugh. We've got no one with good pride or wrath. That's awful, huh? Didn't think about that. The only person who could theoretically, like... The only person who's not at a disadvantage and he's using the right sin affinity still cannot roll nearly that well. That's painful. Guess I should have just gone for the levels. 
Well, we probably could have done level. levels. It probably would have been slightly different. I don't know for sure, I guess. But it probably would have been, like, Gloom or something. If it was Gloom, we could have handled it. Pride Wrath. Yeah, it makes sense. We have no ability to deal with that. Checks out. That's fine. We'll live without it. I would have liked the tier 3. It would have been more fusion fodder. We live. We keep on keeping on. Stagger, nice. We gaming. And they should just be able to kill, yeah. Cool. Observe closer fill up. Thank you, Salvador. It's still such a funny announcer. I really don't pay much attention to announcers anymore. Like, I've gotten really good at filtering them out the past while. But, like, whenever I do look up in the top left and see just the random Dawn Office banter, it's, it's chill, right? It's chill. That's okay. This is so the normal cry. It was weak to blunt, so that's pretty nice. Should be able to do some decent damage. This guy be crying the way he so that no one will. Bars. Can I tell him to just not bother clashing that, honestly? Oh, oh, you know what? I should have you do it, shouldn't I? Or I could just not, though. Sure could just not. Like, this is stupid, I know. But, like, I think we can just do a lot of damage here. Especially if we just go fully into it. Like, look at that. We get that photoelectricity gaming. We're doing a bunch of damage. And we should be able to stagger you before, like, yeah. So you're staggered, so you no longer resist slash. So we get, like, the... Hopefully we get the two fragility here. We do. Got the adds on third coin. Now this is going to do a lot of damage because you're slash weak now that you've been staggered. Otherwise, you would have resisted it. And there there's the stagger plus. And we also get a Skullbuster off. It's not a very serious one, of course, but, you know, still, you know, pretty nice. And now we get hit a little bit, which is fine. You can handle it decently enough. Dawn might not be able to handle it decently enough. She was able to handle it decently enough. Now, both of them were, like, on the brink of being staggered. Don't get me wrong. My definition of handling it well enough might be a little bit wrong. That's fine. It happens. We can Skullbuster, so that's nice. Might probably just kill this turn, honestly, yeah, since we're at max uh, funny things with Ryoshu. But yeah, also, part of the something I wanted to see with this run is good to know that, you know, things increase charge count don't increase unique charge count maxes, right? Like, Ryoshu is still capped at 20 of each of her funny status effects, even when we've got the tier 4 that increases max charge. Good to know. Yeah, go for your lame attack, and now go for your fun attack. Nice. Cool. Yeah, we took some damage because we kind of let him hit us a little bit. We did enough damage to counter back and sip. And we get risk cards now. Nice. And we can get random eagle gift. Nice. Hmm. Ideally, I'd like one that has imitative generator as a reward, but it doesn't seem like we're getting that. Yeah. I might just go Crushers and Breakers, take Fluorescent Lamp, because it's solid. Sure. I'll go for it. Don't really feel like doing the Violet Noon one this run. The Charge Gift, uh, I actively don't think I want. We can do some Fusion stuff here, though, so that should hopefully go well. So Charge Fusion, obviously. Some of you gifts we don't particularly need. There's some of you gifts that are, like, nice, don't get me wrong. But, like, these three I don't need. If we do something like this, yeah, it's not enough. So if we do the three of these... Actually, do it like this instead. That's actually a smarter move. We get Imitative Generate. Yeah, like I said before, definitely the weakest of the ones we could have gotten, but that's fine. We'll live with it. We can try again now. 
We get rid of Carmilla for this one. We get rid of Milepost, but I'm fine with that. It's worth the gamble. And Geo and Fresh Fierce. Force speech. Hard. Geo and Fretual Motion Machine. Do we gamble? No, we can't. Darn. Don't have a good gamble to go for here. I would have liked to get Lightning Rod, get to plus plus, that sort of thing, because it's always funny, but it's not necessary. We got Great Invitate to plus plus, though. More haste and stuff. Shh. Sounds good. Okay, we get this, yeah. This will make up for my... Ugh, never mind. Yeah, I was gonna say it'll make up for my post. Uh, we won't have anything that can pass that check. That's fine. Ready for some good old gnomes? Ready for some... Goes hard. Yeah, so on and so forth. You get the gist, right? Hopefully. These guys resist gloom, so... Bit rude. That's fine. Got a lot of gloom attacks, but that's how it be. Not, you know, super killing them, but we're trying our best. Trying our darn, darn, darndest, as they say. Nice. We're killing some of them, so that's good. We do have a uh, serious skullbuster on this 20 HP gnome. Really showed him who's the boss. Isn't that right? And we should just be able to kill these ones with relative ease. Cool. There is a sloth, so you know, they sure do resist, you know, that warp dawn skill one, but it's easy enough for us to handle regardless. I'll take a risky encounter. Whoops. Did not mean to hit that. Accidentally was trying to click on the confirm button, but moved my mouse too much and uh, clicked a button in OBS instead. That was the Lobotomy Corporation graveyard. Funny still is how I still have that one, but I don't really want to get rid of it, right? It's funny. Two Skullbusters, excellent. Love to see it. I feel like we've been getting really good Skullbuster luck. Like, we've most of these fights, despite only having like two out of six Skullbusters, uh, we've been getting them all within like the first two or three, like, skills most of the time. There's, like, only like a 50% chance, uh, Not, not, not exactly how that works. Uh, it's not, you know, it's close enough though. It's like a fifty percent chance, give or take. You know, percentages. It's not how it calculates to whatsoever, but it's basically a fifty percent. We just busted that guy's skull, and his skull, skull is a chicken, so we just busted that chicken. Through my powers of deduction, I'd be able, I was able to figure out, you know, such an insane leap in. Uh, Logic to find the correct answer. Dance of deduction. The game is afoot. So on and so forth. Yeah, cool. This is a good die. We have another Skullbuster coming this guy's way. Potentially a serious one? No, definitely not a serious one, because I just remember, you know, only ashes remain, yeah. Uh, but we didn't have a chance to use it, and there was no way we'd ever have a chance to use it, because we were just killing that guy. There you go. We get a Sticky Muck, though, so that's good. We got some Pierce stuff, so it does something. Like, do we have, like, a lot of Pierce stuff? No. We've just got your skill, too. And we don't have a single gluttony skill. Um, so Sticky Mock... Not really that great. 
선배에게 찻집을 같이 가자고 해보려고요. 음, 월세가 해결되면 생각해볼게. Sometimes you just gotta press on after that, right? Not really. No, no need to linger. Um, these guys shouldn't be too bad. They're weak to blunt, right? So it works out well for us. It is funny to think about how, like, kind of like, I guess, complex isn't really the word I'm looking for, but kind of like how complex some of, like, the, like, the weaknesses and stuff of enemies have become simply because... They wanted every enemy to weak, be weak to whatever the most recent ID was, for the most part. Like, just think about how, like, those middle guys are weak to blunt, or weak, or weak to blunt when the actual middle IDs are resistant to blunt, and... How, like, this is basically the trend for every single ID and enemy ever. Oh yeah, they're always, they're always just weak to the most recent thing. And, but the most recent thing does not follow, you know, those lying, that, like... Train of thought, right? It's a very reoccurring thing, that's for sure. Yeah, that didn't do too much as expected. I think that's why I doubled up that one. Charge counter current should do decently, though. Yeah, spending the charge, so it's doing good. Cool. That one's dead. The question is, does Heathcliff get a kill with his skill, too? He does, cool. And obviously Dawn's gonna get a kill here. Okay. A little bit dodging, but not nearly enough. It would need to dodge a lot more than that to have a chance. Especially, you know, being slash weak. I mean, yeah, Pendant, sure. Random Poise is always nice to have. We've got, like, everyone on this team has Gloom, so our odds of actually being able to it's not everyone ever i know that is everyone everyone that's right i forgot it's only five people for a second there yeah everyone everyone on this team has gloom so not gonna be very reliable it's just gonna give poise to like some random person each turn and it's gonna be in not maintainable in the slightest as you like it with poise right the best poise is a bad poise it's, a, it's like a launch poise right does like nothing if we really need some sort of bleed so we can actually get red eyes up more consistently. Because I've noticed we've been having a great time with Penitence for red eyes. We haven't been having as consistent a time with. Like, simply because, uh, I mean, we're fine there, right? Like, it's we're actually perfectly fine because we've got Ego Gifts, yeah. But I have noticed, like, I haven't been really getting as many red eyes as we've been gaining Penitence. Because, well, we don't have bleed on enemies and that's a big way of gaining red eyes, hitting enemies with bleed. Okay, this is gonna be like sound very like out of nowhere, but I just went down a random train of thought in my head, and like I hate how I I re so I really hate how Dichi Merso's skill one air edition gain is once per turn. Like it feels like such like a annoying like conditional, right? Like when he's all about building up air edition, you give him multiple skill slots. If he's only got skill ones, like he can only get the air edition from it once. I don't know, I understand why they did it, like, to, like, not make, to make it so you gotta rely on the skill 2 for the air edition gain a little bit more, but, like, it's one air, it's, it's, like, I don't know. I hope you enjoyed random rants from Kylotl. Number, however many times I've done random rants, I'm sure, I'm sure it happens a lot with random things. And I was just thinking, when I've been thinking about DHM Marceau recently, I've been thinking about a lot of IDs I don't usually think about much at all, thanks to uh, Olympus Wordle, right? I've been thinking about, like, you know, I'm getting better at remembering the damage types of certain IDs. Not really getting better at the Sin Affinity part of it, uh, but the damage types I'm getting pretty good at, I want to say. And that's what I've been relying on mostly, right? Like, some of the random IDs I wouldn't have remembered beforehand. Like, I guess, like, even something like, like, something like 
T Dawn even, like for example, like before I would have no idea, but now I know she's blunt slash blunt. And T Rodeon is full blunt. It's pretty wacky, gotta say. We actually don't have another I was assuming we'd have another skill three on you this turn, that's fine. Theoretically you get multiple uh You could get multiple uh, serious skull busts at the same turn, right? Because only Ashes Remain is given to you next turn. So if in the single turn you could gain enough, you could use serious skull buster and then gain enough charge to use it again, you could, right? I think that's technically possible. So it seems like the easiest thing to trigger. Maybe that should be the goal of this run. Maybe I should, like, solo something with Ryoshu and try and see if I can just get, like, six serious Skullbusters lined up in the same turn. It'd be an interesting goal. Not really, like, the biggest deal, but it'd be fun to mess around with, right? Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Who can say? Who can say? Well, we've got two serious skull, or we've got one serious skull buster and a non-serious skull bust to this turn, and we are gonna stagger with this. So pretty cool. Cool. We should just kill it here. Yeah. Got some weak attacks after this, but I think we'll still be doing enough damage. Even our weak attacks are mostly like two coiners or something, right? If I got a heads, it would have actually killed. That's vaguely infuriating, but not enough for me to be actually infuriated, right? Only vaguely. If I was a more inf infuriatable person, maybe it would have infuriated me. But I'm not really an infuriated or, 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 as they say. Okay, well we can. Potentially, if we're lucky... Okay, we didn't. We didn't even roll... Okay, we'll do a certain roll. I'll take Nelly. Why not? Nelly's a fun fight. Not when I see too often. Because you know she's only in hard. Uh, What do we do? We take Nebulizer? Take Homeward? Chief Butler's Secret Arts? I mean, it's a funny idea getting that thing, getting that fusion gift, but I'm not too concerned by it. Goldnern's contract, I mean, yeah, sure. Peace of relationship, yeah, sure. Let's see, what can we sell here? Obviously, burn does literally nothing for us so that we can sell really freely. Bleed really doesn't do anything for us. We do have bleed, but like... I've given up trying to focus on it. Okay, one more. You know what they say about gamblers. Uh, Alright, we can sell this for basically free because this does almost nothing for us. There we go. A real gambler never quits. That's what they say about gamblers in case you were wondering if you wanted me to finish my uh, thought. Cool. Love gambling. Because here's the thing, you gamble for long enough, and it'll just further, like, it'll just keep on cementing your love of gambling, because you'll win, and then you'll, all, like, the negative emotions from losing time and time and time again will just evaporate into thin air, and you'll be feeling so good about gambling again. So you just keep on gambling, and you'll never hate gambling. It's like a trick of the mind, right? You can trick your mind into thinking, you know, happy thoughts by causing yourself enough distress by gambling only to turn it around on itself when you succeed, I guess? Well, now half of Ryoshi's deck is Skullbuster, and the goal is going to be to have almost her entire deck Skullbuster, and then whatever the final boss is, we're going to try soloing it with Ryoshi. And we're just going to see how that goes. I guess it depends on which floor I choose, right? Something like, you know... There's some relatively doable solo-y things, like... 
Gotta keep in mind, like, Ryoshu, she's got a counter, so, like, she can't evade, she can't block too well. She does get some shield from Penitence, like, it's not a lot, but it'll be a decent bit. I'm pretty sure it doesn't trigger turn one, though, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Because it's a turn end type thing, gain next turn, I think. So, like, turn one, you don't gain any Penitence shield, even if you have a bunch of charge at the start of the fight. I'm pretty sure. I'll take Imposed Weight, too, actually, you know what? I don't think I've ever actually gotten to use Imposed Weight. I thought it was super cool, you know, when Mirror Dungeon 4 released. It seemed like a funny thing for solos, but uh, losing 5% of your HP every turn is really bad for solos. So I've never actually used it, right? Never bothered. It can be good if you have some sort of, like, healing stuff, right? That can- that was so weird. I thought, like, my headphones were, like, bugging out or something. That sounded like an audio- like an audio issue, but no, apparently that's just... ...a Heathcliff check-passing noise. A, a multi-crack Heathcliff check-passing noise. Which, you know, really wasn't expecting it. That's for sure. Oh, that is, uh, actually, this is a rough clash. Okay, we'll pull through, though. Cool. If the UP person got all heads at any point, we would have been in for a, uh, bumpy road, right? Nice. Contract trigger, doing some nice damage. Cool. These guys resist our pierce attacks. Luckily, we've got, like, almost no pierce attacks. I think I also meant to switch Ryushu's egos to have both red eyes equipped for this, but I kind of forgot entirely, so uh, silly me. It happens. It's not the biggest deal. I still don't really think the red eyes ego synergy is with the red eye, uh, eyes ID very much. Like, there's some synergy there, you know, right? You kind of want the haste stuff with, Ryo with uh, the ID. Not, like, to the biggest degree, though, so I really don't see the need. Feels like it's not gonna do too much. Also, I got Nebulizer because I figured I could just get Horseshoe and then, and, like, Clover or something, and then it's gonna be sustainable on its own again. As is true with, like, every time you grab random Poise Gifts in a run, it's fairly possible that it's become super doable. Uh, do I take both? I'll take both, actually. It's been a while since I fought one of these. This one shouldn't be too bad either, right? Centipede with only 800 HP should be fairly doable to do in, like, two turns, like, before it gets a chance to build up self-charge, I think. I want to say so. I'm going to try it. And it depends on, like, what skills we roll and stuff, but we're going to have a serious Skullbuster next turn, so that'll be good damage. Uh, we could try going for the head second turn, because the head's weak to blunt. I don't go for the head first turn, of course, because it's got too much shield for it to be, like, warranted whatsoever. The body's staggered now, though, yeah, so we should just go all on the body next turn. This is gonna do some good damage. Yeah, cool. We can just kill it. I don't want to clash, I'm just trying to damage. Just kill this guy. And that should go well, so we get both ego gifts. The charge one, I mean, I kind of want, right? It's not the biggest deal, but I mean, it's a charge ego gift, I'll take it. But the rupture one, I just figured, like, might as well take it, because it's something to sell or fuse away or something, if need be. Right? Da, da, da. And it didn't give it a chance to get any self-charge, so it should just explode. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Centipede is fairly easy with a little bit, with a lower HP pool. You can kill it pretty fast without, you know, too much of, you know, room for potential failure on that front. Like, if we've got bad speed rolls turn two, technically, but, like, we've got Curriculum Vitae++. Plus plus. I don't think we can get a bad speed roll because we just have four haste on everyone basically always. After turn one, that is, of course. It doesn't trigger for turn one. Like, as long as we've got charge. I guess we don't always have charge. That's the one thing, right? Charge is a little bit more inconsistent -y, right? I'll take the neutral, sure. Because sometimes we spend all our charge, right? 
And I'm not sure when exactly Kareem Invite checks, but it might check like before we get a bunch of charge from Yugas, right? But still after we, you know, spent our charge using skills. Putting in like a little bit of a dicey terrain. We just got Western Sloth guys thinking about it, but it's not the biggest deal. That guy, I mean, that guy's dead, so I guess I chose the right thing. Uh, we might lose this clash we pulled through, cool. I wasn't too worried. Either way, we'd be fine. And Rift Space probably just kills this one. Oh, I mean, definitely just kills one. I don't know about probably. It's weak to Slash, and this is a Rift Space, right? Even with the Tails still gaming. You're blocking. That's kind of cringe. Leap, we get the fragility because we get heads coin or heads hit on the third coin. Cool, doesn't make too big of a difference. And serious skull buster finished the sky off. Yeah, we got two tails at max standing. We still rolled a twenty. You can roll a forty pretty reliably with that ego when you have a uh, imitative generator and, and stuff. Oracle is just straight up better for us, so I don't know why I didn't go for it. I just saw Helderfly and was like, yeah, cool. Oracle's one of those Yugas I think I just kind of like innately am not the biggest fan of. Like, I don't think it's bad. I think it's really good. It's a really good Yugi if you can cover like holes you have in your like team for having bad like sin spreads. I don't know, it's like a... It's like net neutral on resources, right? Like, it spends your stuff you have high of to get more of what you need, but you don't have a lot of. I don't know, it's a very good ego gift. I'm not doubting that. I'm sure, like... I don't know, I think I'd just rather, like, any... Or most of the other ego gaining ones. I wouldn't rather, like, perversion, right? Perversion, calling an ego gain one can be... Perversion can only give you stuff you already have, right? Well, like, coffee and cream, as long as you have a little bit of lust, is really good. Obviously, like, Zippo Lighter is really good. A Travel in a Flask is nice for some passive build-up. Travel in a Flask is just all, like, straight up, like... Usually, like, pretty solid, especially given how many short fights you get in Mirror Dungeon. And obviously, Grand Welcome. When I first saw Grand Welcome in Mirror Dungeon 2, I was, like, amazed. I was like, w why would they do this? They can never have, like, a... Pierce only costing ego because it would be super unbalanced. I mean, they haven't really done mono sin cost egos in a long time, not since Dawn Soup, right? Dawn Soup and Hex Nail are the only ones that do that. Kind of wish we'd see more of them because it's an interesting bit, right? Let's see some fusion. Gotta get um, mix like these two, maybe something. Oh, yeah, this too. Cool. Lightning Rod, nice. So, do we want to upgrade Lightning Rod? Yes. Nice. We got the free refresh thingy. And we can just barely get Peace of Relationship plus plus. Oh, and we just get the free refund. Sure thingy. Pride Res, we can do maybe sometimes. Sure. Alright, well, we're looking in like a... We're in a really good position to demolish Nelly. <laughs> Weak to Slash, we've got some Slash. We're mostly Blunt, but I think she's neutral to Blunt. I think she resists Pierce, probably, right? That's the thing. Yeah. Most things in this in Kanto 6 resist Pierce to, so that you don't just use, like, your Kanto 5 IDs and stuff. Really, no turn 1 or turn 2. I mean, turn 2 will probably get one because we'll have a second skill slot on you, but interesting. But yeah, everyone's got, like, 20 charge to start off with. Pretty nice. Can we clash with you? We can. Cool. We can do... Oh, that's the wrong one. Meant to do that. Uh, do a little bit of this. Oh, you can't clash, actually. Okay. Who's this hitting? Ryoshu, you will be fine. I'm not too worried. We're probably also going to get trolled by the Evade a little bit. I'm not too worried. We've got a rip space going through, so that's pretty nice. We do get hit by the evade, that's fine. You gain your additional skill slot next turn, yada yada. We'll live. 
We get this nice charge counter current. We're pretty close to staggering you. We could probably just full one side of you next turn, and that should be fine. Especially because we'll be well, it's gonna be turn two, so we're gonna get curriculum vitae. Our speed's gonna be insane. Yeah, we can just send it, and we should be fine. More than fine, really, but might as well, right? Don't want to bother having to worry about the evade or anything. Pondrick does so much damage to Nelly. Yeah, I'd love to see it. And we probably just kill you here, yeah. We're gonna do some good damage with some of this stuff. Leap's gonna do enough to kill. So yeah, Nelly did not stand a chance there, that's for sure. Jeez. Very dead. Well, we can... I don't really want that, though. Yeah, we'll take... I'll take this one, yeah. Sure. Give me cost. I kind of want more cost right now. Don't have too much of it. We're about to get a shop, and I'm going to want to reroll a bunch. Do we go Tyrannical Pride Gamble? Let's do it. Why not? Either we get a really fun fight, or we get Gas Harp. <laughs> no. Either we get a really good fun fight, or we get Hurtily. Oh, there's another Skullbuster. Now, unfortunately, I don't think Ryoshu would be capable of soloing Gas Harpoon. Maybe I'm wrong, though. I could be wrong. Also, I'm wrong. Like, because we're going to, like, start off with, like, that stuff, right? So, maybe... Give me Lithograph, I guess, for a little bit of healing. We'll see. We'll see which of the two it is. I think either way, I'm going to try soloing with Ryoshu, but I'm going to do it in such a way where... Uh, if things go poorly, I'll just, re I'll just retry the fight before Ryoshu gets the chance to die, and we'll just do it normally. Could definitely do some funnies here. It's like... Yeah, because only ashes remain is next turn, right? So we could get multiple in the same turn. Would be funny. If it does end up being Gas Harpoon, that's a fight where you kind of do have plenty of time to, uh... Well, get to six skill slots, right? Some fights, it's easy to do that in and others. See, so double skull buster, cool. We've just been busting so many skulls. That's been like the theme so far, right? Do some damage. Cool. Do some more damage to Nico. Stagger, probably? I think so. Yeah, cool. And this attack is also going for Nico. It is okay. So Nico dies, I think. Photoelectric Harpoon should finish the job. Nice. So it's just this one random guy left. Who, uh, we are double skull busting. We've got only Ashes remain, so we don't get to, you know, we're, we can't get serious. Sometimes Ryosha gets too serious and then needs to, you know, think about her dead daughter a little bit and chill out. I guess. Still a stat- it's, it's really a status effect with a lot of worrying implications. And I really do wonder. Really do wonder, yeah, okay. Dust to dust, speaking of, you know, dust, <laughs> speaking of Ryoshi's child, there, no. Thought ends there.
고민거리는 없어? 혹시라도 these we're gonna be fighting some you know we're just, we're just fighting some random hoodlums on the streets god i'm definitely glad that we're not we don't have to worry about like this filter in future content from now on i do like the sepia filter thingy but like it definitely has gotten old, I think. And, like, luckily they had, you know, like, the whole, like, lanterns and, like, lights that, like, make color return and stuff, so, like, that was nice. So, like, most of Kanto 6, it was, like, still in perfectly fine color. A little bit of a tint most of the time, I want to say, but not that much. Kind of varied from point to point, yeah. But then we had time killing time, which also did it, and then it just ended off with uh, it being a little bit in the beginning of Warp Express, but no more. We're in P Corp now, where we're going to be doing some dastardly activities, I suppose. Okay, I guess I'm getting this back. Sure. <laughs> Hold on. We'll see. We're probably. Hmm. I'm trying to think, when are we gonna get Dante's notes? Is it gonna be next week? It might be next week, honestly. We might finally we get might get our, the start of our next batch of Dante's notes. Would be cool if so. Cause usually it's like a month or so before we eat the next season. And next week would probably be like the month marker. Interesting fight. Uh Sure, that's fine. Um, yeah, so it might be Dante's notes. We might get our little, like, you know, cutscene thing that I usually do alongside Dante's notes. It's just like a little bit of, like, what the sinners are doing, what they're up to, that sort of thing, right? Might see them being like, oh, where are we driving to in P Corp? And then Dawn's like, oh no, I have bad feeling. <laughs> Worst, like, medieval accent impression ever. Nice, another prideful run over. That's fine, we're blocking each other. We're getting the fragile next turn. We're not going to get hit at all next turn, though, so I can't say I'm very afraid. If we just do something like this, a little bit of that for safety, but I think we're just set, right? Serious Skull Boss, the one at full HP, just killed him instantly. 446 damage, yeah. And these guys don't even have skulls in the traditional sense. I mean, I guess Skull Buster isn't about breaking your opponent's head as much as it is about, you know, breaking, you know... Uh, once in Penitent's head. So Skull is always busted, no matter no matter the target. Oh, is this the end of the floor? Feels like a short floor. Maybe to make up for the fact that both boss options you can get are fairly long. Poise Gift doesn't do anything for us here, so we'll just take the Rupture one. We sold it earlier, so we get it back now. So, you know, that's cool. That's been a running theme this floor, it seems, getting you gifts I sold back. But we know what the plan is. Faust, no. Now, a lot of these we don't need. We obviously don't need burn. We don't need pierce. Don't need sinking. Don't need sinking. Don't need burn. Don't need tremor. Don't need, like, this poise. Uh. Kind of late for homeward. Don't need tomorrow's fortune. Uh, some of the things we could get rid of, like that poison stuff. I guess perversion doesn't help us at this point. I mean, to favor, I mean, it's in a little bit of healing. I'll keep it. Grand welcome, we don't need at this point. Some of this stuff could be nice, so I'll keep it. Do some refreshing. I'm taking wound cleared, though, yeah. It's just too good not to, right? Ryoshu. Cool. Alright, well, uh, 
That was the main thing I was looking for, so... Uh, press on, just upgrade some stuff, maybe. I've got some of you that are nice to upgrade, so... I'll roll with it. Because we want Wound Clary to be plus plus, obviously. You always want Fluorescent Lamp plus plus, because it's just fairly solid. And I'll take Pendant plus... Yeah. And Bloody Gadget plus. Cool. Seems good. Alright. Okay, that is Cyborg. Alright. That's fine. I was really hoping for uh, Gas Harpoon, because that could be funny, but it's fine. This fight's actually, like, got, like, enemies that are weak to my attack, so it's probably the better option anyways. Or do these does more damage to us? Should first and foremost, can I get Pride Resistant with one of these? Blind Obsession, yeah. I mean, that's probably, like, objectively the best way to start this, I think. Just pull out the Blind Obsession. We also get the passive, so we get, like, more poised stuff with Pride skills, you know, not really gonna help us whatsoever. But we get this going because so our resistances are going well. No need to be so quick to, you know, the skull busting. I don't know, I haven't really thought about it, but yeah, mass attacks are a pretty good way of getting a bunch of penitents and red eyes, huh? That's funny. These guys are actually the biggest threat. You're relatively fine to just ignore. We resist Pierce and Blunt now, so like... The minions are the ones I actually actively want to clash against. But because I gotta take them down to get rid of the surgery thingy-majig. Cool. I think it's a wound cleared. We're stacking some decent bleed with our attacks now, so that's nice. Wound cleared is pretty chill. Okay. We'll do that, maybe. Now, I know we're doing a lot of this this turn, which means we're getting stew amounts of healing and SP gain that we can't do anything with. That's part of the fun, right? It's a crucial part of it. Maybe we start saving our Skullbusters, like, when possible. Go for the non-Skullbusters whenever I see a non-Skullbuster. Just to pace myself a little bit, right? Maybe we try something like that. Because, like, this is... Like, the skill 2 is more than enough to take this guy down. We can spam the Skullbuster stack, you know, the nice bleed. And Skullbuster is more than capable of taking this guy's, uh... And winning these clashes, I think, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. And here's a serious Skullbuster too, just for good, just for good luck, really, honestly. Like we're doing far more damage to this guy than we really need to do to him. Actually, I didn't, we didn't do enough to bring him down. Okay, cool. So we've got only ashes remain this turn. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna pull up a couple of Skullbusters. Only a few, though. Only a few. Just a little bit, right? A couple Skullbusters, and then next turn we do six Skullbusters, and we see how that goes. Maybe we do all six of them onto the actual big cyborg guy just for funsies. You're tanking a little bit, not too much though. Okay, investigate the factory. So now let's be funny. We're gonna get hit a little bit here. We're gonna be fine. So I'm not too concerned, but uh... We're just gonna go all out on this guy just for fun. <laughs> just see how many serious skull monsters we can get off, right? Normal Skullbuster. Here's a serious Skullbuster. Cool. And we should be able to get at least one more serious Skullbuster off, because, you know, these gain 7, gain 7, gain a little bit more because of the various gimmicks. Yeah, we're also stacking a little bit of bleed when we do this. 
Just a little bit. Only a little bit, really, because, like, it's only one count per hit, since she's got no count infliction stuff. And these guys are, like, bleeding themselves to death while we just ignore them. Like, what more could I ask for? Yeah, now we have only Ashes remain, so we get stupid amounts of, like, healing and stuff, so that's pretty swell. Sure, do that. Bottom one we definitely do not need to actually double up on because the bleed alone is enough to kill it, right? We also have nine damage up here. I'm not fully sure why we have nine. I'm sure it's like a oh, it's because of how much charge we spent, isn't it? Yeah, that actually makes sense. Yeah, because um the motion perpetual motion machine T1 perpetual motion machine thingy the the charge fusion gift um gives you like damage of and buffs based on how much charge you spend in this fight on top of the fact we're gaining some from uh the uh what's what's his face bloody trinket thingy whatever it's called bloody gadget that's the one cool allies have lost their passives uh you bleed to death you bleed to death you don't bleed to death but like you might as well with how much we're just killing you. Bleed, cool. You get to clash twice, but then you bleed out at that point, cool. And then a little bit of Skullbuster to finish the job. There we go. It's a really easy fight to solo. They don't really do much damage, especially when we resist Blunt and uh, have an ego that gives us 0.5 to Pride. Makes that fight really easy. You did 48% of the damage. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. A little bit. And we get to claim our rewards now. Spend weekly bonuses? Don't mind if I do. Ah. Love to see it. More boxes. Is this enough to push me to 2,000 boxes? It might? I don't remember. I think I might be a little short. I think I might be like a cop, like a few dozen short, but like pretty close to 2,000 boxes. Yeah, it's not enough for another level, but we'll claim it anyways. 69 more boxes. How are we looking? It is over 2,000. Okay, 2,020. 2,024 boxes. Wow, would you look at that? Coincidentally, it's the, the, the year we're in right now. Without any sort of external, you know, tomfoolery required. If you ignore the external tomfoolery I did on camera right then and there. Which is pretty ignorable. Oh, more Dawn Shards. Cool. Awesome. I wonder if we can get more Dawn Shards from the Dawn Tart extraction. No, we aren't. Heathcliff. <laughs> That's not Dawn. Silly Heathcliff. Oh, and a two-star. Cool. It's just something random. Yes, yeah, Sanko to sure. I'll take it. God. God. Yeah, I've got a lot of shards and stuff. Um, I'll be doing really well when this season ends. That's for sure. Be yeah, a uh, serious skullbuster. What more is there to say? No, seriously. What what more is there to say? No, but yeah, uh, she's fine. Yeah, definitely a pretty straightforward unit. Honestly, both these while purchase IDs definitely did not need like the funny two-page explanation thingies. They're fairly simplistic, and, like, they've got, like, complicated mechanics, but, like, in a way where they're really not that complicated, I want to say, right? Like, they're pretty simple ideas to play. I don't know. That's true most of the time, right? Usually it's not super complex to play most of these. There's a couple ideas that have more in-depth mechanics, but usually not so bad. But anyways, that'll be all for this time. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!